It said that if two bullets are released from the same height, one fired from a gun and the other simply drop, they'll hit the ground at the same time. That's because the fired bullet doesn't have any lift. Gravity affects both bullets equally. So, in theory, they should land simultaneously. To put this myth to the test, Adam began with a theoretical experiment. Instead of real bullets, he used a steel ball as a stand-in. He first dropped the steel ball from a set height. Then he launched another one horizontally using a spring on a table. A high-speed camera was set up to capture the exact moment each ball hit the ground. The dropped steel ball took 401 milliseconds to land. The spring launched one hit the ground in 403 milliseconds. That's an incredibly small difference. So, the myth seemed plausible. Next, it was time for a real bullet test. The first step was to figure out how far a bullet would travel before hitting the ground when fired horizontally. They mounted a gun on a 1.2 meter high stand. Then they fired at wooden boards placed 100, 200, and 300 feet away from the muzzle. Based on the test results, the bullet landed somewhere between 350 and 370 feet. To precisely track where it hit, they laid white paper on the ground in that range. Eventually, they determined the bullet landed at exactly 360 feet. Now it was time for the final indoor experiment. The setup was in a 480-foot-long facility, with no wind to interfere with the bullet's trajectory. Jamie built a special rig that used an electromagnet to hold a second bullet. At the exact moment the handgun was fired, the electromagnet shut off, dropping the other bullet. The rig was positioned at the 360-foot mark. If the myth held true, both bullets should hit the ground at the same time, at the same spot. The test began, and the result was just about perfect. The fired bullet left a skid mark as it hit the ground. High-speed footage showed that the two bullets landed only 0.0096 seconds apart. That tiny gap is simply the result of gravity doing its thing. It's a beautiful demonstration of physics in action. So, the myth is confirmed. They say it's impossible to punch your way out of a paper bag, because paper tends to disperse and absorb force instead of tearing. To get to the bottom of this myth, Adam grabbed a regular sheet of craft paper. Testing showed it takes about 35 pounds of force to break it. That's a level of strength pretty much anyone has. But if you let the paper hang loosely, you can't break it with just 35 pounds of force, because it only takes about half a pound of pressure to make it move. And that's the heart of the myth. To put it to the test, Jamie built a six-foot-wide square paper bag. Meanwhile, Adam took a few lessons from a professional boxer to learn how to throw fast and powerful punches. Do you think the bag will break? This is about to turn into a fight for survival. The test was set up as a three-round match, each round lasting two minutes. Once Adam was sealed inside the paper bag, all you could see was the bag shaking wildly. He threw everything he had at it, but still couldn't break through. After training, each of his punches could generate nearly 600 pounds of force. But so far, not a single punch had enough impact to rip the bag. Finally, just before the end of round one, Adam managed to break through. In rounds two and three, he was able to tear the bag open in about a minute each time. Looks like the myth has been busted, but Adam admitted breaking out of a paper bag isn't exactly easy. He had to throw every punch with full force, and after a while, the effort becomes exhausting. It's said that a worker once drove into the desert and his car broke down. To escape the situation, he supposedly converted his car into a motorcycle. To test this myth, Adam got a car identical to the one in the story and drove it out into the desert. He then started stripping off all the outer body parts. But when it came to the core components, things got tricky. The car's engine weighed about 250 pounds, and with the tools they had on hand, it was nearly impossible to move it. Ideally, for a motorcycle conversion, you want the engine positioned in the center of the frame to keep the balance as stable as possible. That's when Jamie came up with an idea. He suggested removing two of the wheels and repositioning them, one at the front and one at the back. Then they'd press the engine's output shaft directly onto one of the wheels. So when the shaft spins, the wheel underneath spins as well, but in the opposite direction of the engine's rotation. That means the back of the car effectively becomes the front after the conversion. Fortunately, the car was a 19 35 model with a relatively simple structure, so they managed to complete the conversion in just two hours. They reattached the steering wheel and rigged a makeshift throttle system using steel wire. Since the gear shift and brakes were on the same side as the engine, one person had to sit up front to steer and give directions, while another had to sit in the back to control the gears and brakes. During the first test run, Jamie handled the steering, while Adam managed the gear shift from the back. The motorcycle did manage to start, but with all the weight concentrated in the rear, keeping it balanced was extremely difficult, let alone trying to ride it 100 miles back to civilization. At this point, the myth was officially busted. But they did come up with a better method for modifying 
occupying the vehicle. A motorcycle pulls a tablecloth at high speed, and everything on the table stays perfectly still. Is it magic, or is it real? Adam decided to test it in the workshop first. Turns out he pulled it off pretty easily. As long as you yank the cloth fast enough, it seems to work. But is it really that simple? They took the experiment to the warehouse, where they built a 24-foot-long table, identical to the one in the viral video. One end of the tablecloth was attached to a motorcycle. Once everything was set, Jimmy launched the bike with a powerful start. But the result? Everything on the table went flying with the cloth. A truly tragic magic trick. So, they extended the pull rope to 200 feet, the goal, to increase the cloth's initial speed. Next, they swapped the cloth for a lighter, silkier one. Jimmy hit the throttle as the rope unraveled fast. And sure enough, the faster the cloth moved, the closer they got to success. Speed, they realized, was everything. So they headed to Alameda, where the motorcycle could hit over 100 miles per hour. Once everything was ready, Jimmy launched and hit 100 miles per hour in just four seconds. The cloth vanished in a flash, but still, some objects toppled and shifted. At this point, Adam was convinced. The viral video had to be fake. To recreate the exact effect, they first applied a layer of lubricant on the table. Then they placed a thin sheet of clear plastic over the tablecloth, securing it at one end. All the items were placed on top of the plastic sheet with the tablecloth underneath, between the sheet and the table. And just like that, even without crazy high speed, the cloth could be pulled out effortlessly. See, now that looks exactly like the viral video. There's a rumor that spraying water downward from fire hoses can lift a car off the ground. To test this myth, Adam started with a small-scale platform to check if the idea was even feasible. He connected multiple hoses to the bottom of the platform. All the hoses were linked to a single PVC pipe, which would distribute the water evenly. Once water was pumped into the system, it would flow through each hose and spray downward. If the pressure was high enough, the force of the water could lift the platform off the ground. With the fire truck ready to pump water, the test began. As the water pressure increased, the hoses started spraying downward. Soon enough, the platform rose into the air. The small-scale test was a success. It proved the concept could work. Next came the full-scale test. The goal was to lift a 1.5-ton car. They brought in six fire trucks, each with a 1,000-horsepower pump, an impressive setup by any standard. Once everything was ready, the fire trucks began pumping water. To stay safe, the pressure was gradually increased across the system. But when the pressure hit its peak, the car still hadn't budged and the system had already maxed out its water capacity. To increase the pressure, they disconnected two of the hoses, hoping that concentrating flow into the remaining eight would make a difference. Starting at 100 PSI, they slowly ramped up the pressure again. But despite all the fine-tuning and adjustments, the car still wouldn't lift. At this point, it became clear. To recreate the results seen in the viral video, Adam would have to remove the car's engine to reduce its weight. With the engine out, they ran the test again. This time, the car finally lifted off the ground and stayed suspended about 15 feet in the air for several minutes. Sure, the test wasted a massive amount of water, but in the name of science, it was worth it. In the end, the myth was busted. 